Hey guys, welcome back. Today I have another video game benchmark for you, and this time we're looking at the new For Honor game. Uh, this is an action fighting game developed by Ubisoft for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. But of course, we will be looking at the PC version and putting it through its paces. As usual, I won't be focusing too much on the gameplay, and I'm certainly not going to be reviewing the game. Instead, we're just here to benchmark it and see how different GPUs compare. For Honor is built upon the Anvil Next 2.0 game engine, and this is the same game engine that was used for 2014's Assassin's Creed Unity, 2015's Rainbow Six Siege, and Assassin's Creed Syndicate. On top of that, we checked out the beta version of Ghost Recon Wildlands last week, which also uses the engine. So some pretty impressive titles have taken advantage of this engine over the past few years. That said, coming off the shaky Ghost Recon's Wildlands beta performance last week, you might be a bit concerned in regards to how For Honor is going to play on your PC. The good news is though, this game actually appears very well optimized and there are a heap of tweakable settings on the PC, as well as a useful built-in benchmark tool. The display menu allows gamers to enable or disable things like V-Sync, change the resolution and aspect ratio, as well as the display mode and even monitor. Meanwhile, the graphics menu provides four presets which have been labeled low, medium, high and extreme. For testing, I've used the Extreme preset to see what it takes to run this game in all of its glory. Extreme sets things like texture filtering of 16 times, enables motion blur, dynamic reflections, and MHBAO, ambient occlusion. It also maxes out the geometric detail, texture quality, dynamic shadows, and environment detail. Finally, this also sets the anti-aliasing method to TAA. For those of you wondering, Ubisoft recommends gamers use a CPU that is equal to or greater than the Core i5-2500K or AMD FX6350 with 8GB of system memory. For the GPU, they recommend the GeForce GTX 680 or the AMD Radeon R9 280X. So there aren't exactly steep requirements, but I'm keen to see how the game runs on the latest and previous generation GPUs. I should note that this is an NVIDIA sponsored title and NVIDIA has game ready drivers available. AMD has also managed to sneak out early driver support that is said to boost the RX 480's performance by 4-5%. to So that's an impressive achievement and of course I have tested using that very driver. Just to clarify, I have tested using the NVIDIA 378.66 WHQL driver and the AMD 17.2.1 Relive driver. With that, all our testing takes place using our Core i7 7700K test machine, which sees the processor running at 4.9 GHz with 32 GB of DDR4 3000 memory. The performance numbers you're about to see are based on the built-in benchmark, which I found to do a pretty good job of mimicking in-game performance, at least as far as the GPU is concerned. I did find that the CPU was taxed much more heavily when actually playing the game, but since I won't be showing CPU performance for this video, that isn't an issue. Here's a quick look at part of the benchmark before we jump to the results. Okay, so first up we have the old bangers, the rusty old renderers from a time almost forgotten. Sitting at the top of the heap we have the GeForce GTX 980 Ti, which admittedly is still a weapon worthy of much respect. So too is AMD's Fury X, and although 8% slower, it did turn in an impressive 98 FPS average. The little nano knocked off the vanilla GTX 980, though the once proud Maxwell offering did beat out the R9 390X. Interestingly, the GTX 970 makes out very well here, sticking with the R9 390, a graphics card it has gotten used to seeing from a distance. Both spat out 72 FPS on average with a 55 FPS minimum, and more importantly, both provided very playable performance at 1080p with all the eye candy turned on. Even the GTX 960 and R9 380 didn't do too poorly, although the 380 was faster. That said, we often find when overclocking these GPUs to the max that the GTX 960 does come out on top. Both will ideally require a downgrade in the visual department, and the high preset or maybe even the medium preset would work best here. Moving to 1440p, we find that despite its short-term memory issues, the Fury X gets on just fine, working within 1fps of the GTX 980 Ti while matching its 50fps minimum. The Nano also pulls well ahead of the GTX 980 here. Once again, we find the GTX 970 and R9 390 still locked in a heated battle, and both are just able to deliver perfectly playable performance at 1440p. Beyond that though, gamers will be reaching for the escape key and heading for the graphics menu where they will be opting for either the high or medium quality presets instead. Then those running the R7 370 or slower might even alt-tab and direct their nearest browser window towards Amazon for a bit of an upgrade. 
The 4K resolution was never really friendly towards the GTX 980 Ti or Fury X, and 2017 gaming isn't going to change that. Still, a 32fps average from both graphics cards wasn't bad, but those aiming for this extreme resolution will want to dial some settings back. Again, worth pointing out is the fact that despite its smaller memory buffer, the Fury X maintains a higher minimum frame rate. Still dust free? Ring rust isn't an issue for this lot, they've been battling it out non-stop since their introduction. In fact, it's been a back and forth barn burner between the RX 480 and GTX 1060 for months now. For Honor doesn't exactly settle the dispute either, both dropped down to the same 62fps minimum 1080p and while the GTX 1060 did push slightly ahead for the average, there isn't exactly a lot in it. The 3GB 1060 and 4GB RX 480 are also very competitive and the results are within the margin of error. As we have come to expect, the RX 470 completely hoses the GTX 1050 Ti, while the vanilla 1050 remains the most cocky budget GPU, offering the RX 460 a lend of a few extra cores to help it out. Moving to 1440p you can naturally forget about the sub $150 offerings, in fact even the RX 470 struggles here using the extreme preset. The 3GB 1060 takes a bit of a hit on the minimum frame rate, and while not catastrophic it does clearly fall behind the 4GB RX 480. Meanwhile the GTX 1060 and RX 480 continue to battle it out in what I'm sure is an honourable fight, so no name callings going on here then. For a smoother experience, the GTX 1070 really delivers, and if you must stay above 60fps at all times, then a GTX 1080 will be in order. As a recap, the previous generation GTX 980 Ti and Fury X were good for 32fps on average at 4K. If you can afford it, the Titan XP blows them both right out of the water with over 70% more performance, delivering a fairly smooth 55fps on average. Of course, the Titan XP is a year newer and over 80% more expensive, so I'm not saying we should hold a parade in its honour, but yeah, it's still pretty fast. I still haven't come up with an intelligent way to display this much data in a video at one time, and if we're waiting for me to come up with a breakthrough, well, get used to squinting. Anyway, what we have here are the 1080p results from both the previous and current generation GPUs crammed into a single graph. For those that do want to study these numbers without having to use a 60 inch TV, please check out the written version which is published over at TechSpot, and I'll provide the link in the video description. Just quickly, here are all the 1440p results. Again, it was great to see some of the previous generation big hitters like the Fury X and GTX 980i still mixing it up amongst the big boys. Finally, the 4K results. Ironically, I have squeezed 25 graphics cards into this graph and just two of them are really relevant. A bit silly, I know, but if I didn't include this graph, that one guy would be like, Steve, where's the 4K performance with all the GPUs? Eh, not the best use of my time, so let's just wrap this up. For Honor isn't really my style of video game, I have to admit, but even so, I did find it quite a bit of fun to play, and more importantly, for those of you who love action fighting games, For Honor appears very well optimised on the PC. 1080p gamers should have little trouble maxing out the visuals, as I found last season's R9 380 and GTX 960 could deliver playable performance. Meanwhile, the RX 470, GTX 970 and R9 390 all delivered a very satisfying experience. These three GPUs were also very capable at 1440p, though for a truly smooth experience you will want something like the Fury X, GTX 980 Ti or GTX 1070. As always, 4K gaming is best left to the big boys, making the Titan XP and GTX 1080 the only two really relevant graphics cards here, at least for now. For those of you wondering, the game isn't massively CPU demanding and does play quite well on something like a Core i3-6100. That said, AMD's FX8370 was quite a bit slower than the 6100, so if you want to see a full breakdown of For Honor's CPU performance, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do about creating a video. I know I said I was going to wrap this up, well... I accidentally lied, if that's a thing. Before completing the video, I went back and recorded the RX 488 GB and GTX 1060 6GB going through the built-in benchmark and decided to show the footage side by side. I know a lot of you guys really like this kind of thing, but for those of you who don't, feel free to skip ahead by about 40 seconds. For testing, I now use board partner cards since they represent the actual performance many of you are going to see. I mean, come on guys, who out there pays a premium for a Founders Edition graphics card or a hot AMD reference card that often throttles? That's right, I don't see too many hands. Seriously though, the EVGA GTX 1060 for the win plus and the MSI RX 480 Gaming X do represent the best out of the box performance you're going to find. That said, they aren't exactly worlds different from the base models either. 
As you saw earlier, both are able to deliver a very playable 1440p performance in For Honor. The benchmark pass you're watching now has been conducted at 1080p using an extreme quality preset, so you should have seen frame rates staying mostly above 60fps. This benchmark does a good job of mixing things up, and there are a few different scenes to be rendered here. The benchmark finishes and gives us a breakdown of the performance from the six zones tested, and as you can see, the results are very competitive. Well, that about does it for this one. Let me know what you guys think about the results in the comment section below. And if you've already picked up For Honor, please let us know how it runs on your rig. Also, for the written version with nice, big, easy to digest graphs, please check out the link in the video description, which will head you in the direction of TechSpot. Over in the written version at TechSpot, I did test a grand total of 45 GPU, so a fair bit more than what's found in this video. Uh, there's definitely some older cards that you may still be interested in there. And I also threw in a few different CPUs as well, so that makes for an interesting comparison. And there are some CPU scaling results as well, so it's certainly worth checking out. I'm your host Steve, and I'm going to go and have a long nap. I'll probably just end up dreaming about sword fights anyway though. Um, medieval sword f uh, whatever. I'll catch you guys next time. All right then. If I refused, there would be a slaughter.